Hello and welcome to Arikimi's YouTube channel. My name is Harsh Singh and in this video we shall discuss current affairs and gazette for today, 11th of February 2022. Before we begin this discussion, let me welcome all the people who are here online. Uh, hello Amlan, hi Ashish, good evening Bhavani, hi Netra, Dima, Kriti, good evening, hello Ravi, hi Nostol, welcome back, hi Pooja, good evening to you and uh, other people joining right now or viewing offline. Good evening to all of you. Uh, thank you for participating in two questions successively introduced and uh, quickly answered. That's great. In fact, uh, some of you have answered exactly the points that were required. I saw Hima's comments here on uh, 10 mechanisms to enforce uh, ease of doing business in India. They were quite uh, relevant. Uh, so, using these keywords that, that is closest to what the government policy states, uh, that is the best to do, right? So, uh, let us have uh, uh, in discussion what, uh, what we are supposed to do. Let's include that right now. So, uh, in updates, what do we have? One report, jailed for doing business report by ORF. What is it about? We'll understand. Second one is on uh, impact of fly ash, which has been taken up by National Green Tribunal. And the third one is a Samrid initiative to have inclusive, edu in inclusive uh, health sector throughout the country. We will study each of them in the update. This day in history dedicated to World Yunani Day. Feature news, important topic, Namami Gange mission. We will understand the complete history of river cleaning uh, in India. What have been the issues all the time? What is the reason that this, all the re uh, rivers are not getting clean? We will understand what is Avirat Ganga and... Uh, uh, the polluted Ganga, what are the concepts? So, a totality, in totality, we will understand this particular issue of uh, uh, river cleaning projects in India, having focus on Ganga. Image of the day on thawing an Arctic permafrost, all right. So, a sign of um, global warming. The three, four terms that we have, CVI, Coastal Vulnerability Index, released by the Ministry of, uh, Ministry of Earth Sciences. All right, Incois. The second one is on nuclear fusion reaction that I stated about yesterday. Third one is on um, pollution in Mumbai, particulate matter increase. And the fourth, white cheek macaw found uh, in Arunachal Pradesh, a very elusive species. The three editorials that we have, one on uh, India's balancing act between Russia and US. The second one on uh, public finance. And the third one is on local job laws, right? The ones which are popular in states like Haryana, other places as well. And what are the issues? Case study on the day is on Neo School. What is it about? Okay, so let's start this conversation. All right. Now, uh, I always see that there are people, you know, uh, maybe 10, 12 of you are replying to these uh, comments and questions, but there are more people in the online uh, watch list. So, people who are watching online, let me share this with you. There is no problem in committing mistakes. You might as well, you know, write your views on the issues. Even if you have longer sentences, don't have points, don't worry. And you can also start uh, memorizing the points that others are putting in, right? So, um, this is how we will learn from each other. Remember, gyan baatne se bhatta hai. We can increase the level of knowledge, competence we have through sharing. Because through sharing, our better points will be appreciated and the weaknesses, they will they'll get washed away. Because we will start adopting from others as well, right? This is how we will build a better uh, ecosystem for education. And there is scope for all of you, all of you. We have 800 plus seats in the UPSC and released over multiple years. So nothing doing, sharing and learning, right? This is what is important. The first uh, snapshot for us is jail for doing business report. This has been released by ORF. We do keep studying articles from ORF many a times, right? Many of them uh, I have discussed in editorials and uh, another organization team leads Red Tech. So what they say is that India has a, a very, very complicated system of compliances in our country. Very complicated system of compliances and laws. In fact, there are uh, more than 1,500 laws and around 70,000 compliances in these laws. 70,000 compliances in these laws. And they all relate to, um, uh, you know, uh, you know, compliances related to the industrial processes, how to set up, a, you know, ease of doing business, doing business compliances. And half of these compliances, 55% of uh, these laws and around 40% of these compliances, they are penal in nature. They are penal in nature. 
So on one hand, we talk of ease of doing business while on the other, we ensure that if the compliances are not followed, the managers, directors or CEO level officers are jailed, right? So, uh, and you should, you you know, if you, if I give you examples of uh, what kind of compliances we are asking for, it is not that if somebody helps, uh, you know, some worker's hand, it, it gets injured and we do not help them, then we get jailed. No, it is just that every three months, the bathroom has to be whitewashed. And if it is not done, jail term for one to three years, right? So compliance is as simple as maintaining hygiene in the office spaces. And if not followed, it will lead to jail term. And 55% of laws are such. 40% of such compliances are such. Imagine, this is what is called as friendly fire. Have you heard of this word friendly fire? When we are going to assault or attack an enemy, by mistake, we shoot our own friend. And this is not a mistake. The government uh, has formulated these laws, not now. Many of them are IFI laws. Government has also consolidated many laws in times, in these recent times. They have focused that they eliminate redundant laws. In fact, upgrade these laws. But then, uh, as of now, this search says that this is not complete. One very simple analogy for this is, you know, show me the man and I will find the crime. Is it not true? Show me the man and I will find the crime. This usually happens on roads. Once police has stopped us, tra traffic police has stopped us, they will find out something or the other. In fact, the rules are such that uh, one cannot have, one, one needs to have their car clean all the time. So if the person has caught you, if the policeman has caught you for uh, uh, violation of XYZ traffic and it is found that yes, you were innocent there, there might be innumerable other reasons because of which they can catch hold of you. Even if uh, uh, the car's headlight is not working, it is our responsibility and we are accountable for it. We will be penalized for it, right? So you show me the man and I will find the crime. Should that be the way for a country which wants to grow? No, it should not be. In fact, ease of doing business is what the government is promoting. It wants ease of doing business and highlighting of such kind of issues, you know, criminal, uh, uh, you know, uh, issues through which a person will be sent to, sent behind the bars. This must be prohibited because this is primarily restricting the manufacturing capability of the country. Manufacturing. Other sectors doing decent, fine, but manufacturing what we want to ramp up, managers are not able to take action. And, and, and what happens here is that a series of nepotism, series of crime and corruption, right, favoritism, all these are things, you know, they take shape here because... Because primarily, when the organization is not able to meet these requirements set by the government, these people will be jailed. They don't want to get jailed. If they don't get jailed, then they will have to do some favors, right? So, a complete, uh, you know, dark side to the laws. This has come to light. This must not happen in a country like ours. Manufacturing, coming to manufacturing. Manufacturing is the one which is getting lagged because of these kind of issues. All the other sectors as well. But why manufacturing? Because we focus on man focusing on manufacturing, which is not happening adequ adequately in our country. So when uh, I get that word, I remember Make in India. Three important segments you guys should have remembered, would have remembered. But yes, must remember if you don't remember this right now. So increasing uh, 10 crore jobs in manufacturing sector. Ensuring that the growth of 12 to 14 percent does happen specifically in manufacturing sector in the coming years. And ensuring that it leads to 25 percent of participation of manufacturing in the GDP. Presently, manufacturing, which is a part of the industry sector, the industry sector, whole participation in GDP is 25 percent. 25 percent is industry, uh, more than 50 percent is uh, service sector. And a smaller chunk, 18% is the agriculture sector, right? So if we want a specific chunk that is manufacturing segment of the industry sector, it to grow, then we want these kind of laws removed. Show me the man and find the crime should not happen. And look, you know, there are, there are seven or eight categories in which these kind of compliances have existed and they have troubled the people in corporate world. Labor, secretarial jobs, environmental, health, safety, finance, taxation, industry specific, commercial and general. So let me uh, quickly share with you because I know this uh, specific part. There are ways in which uh, if a person has erred, done mistakes. See, to err is human. We, if we are humans, we can make mistakes. Only machines don't make mistakes. But if we are humans and we make mistakes, what is the way out? So what does the law say? Or what is the philosophy behind it? Mm. 
see when a person makes mistake there can be multiple ways in which they can be you know something can happen to it so one is reformatory right the other one is retribution and the third one is uh, uh, penalizing or uh, yeah penalty all right so reformatory is counseling we counsel the person oh galti ho gayi don't do it next time right it's a mistake from your end fine we have agreed and we we ask for forgiveness and that's that's done so this is reformatory in nature you could relate to reformatory when we look at uh, children home small children committing crimes and then we forgive them right reformatory because we believe they can reform themselves the second one is retributive without uh, this is this means an eye for an eye simple as simple as that you uh, killed somebody death penalty to you this is retributive this is a system which is not followed in our country but yes this is one of the systems of uh, penalizing and the third one is penalizing for the particular crime that they have done but this penalty must be proportional no What, how can we jail somebody this leads to excessive criminalization this is a important word for you people here excessive criminalization of employer compliances bathroom nahi you know bathroom is not being white washed and we have we people are putting them in jails right have them fine good fine so this is the first uh, uh, you know snapshot about this is where i have included all the compliances norms by the world bank world bank ease of doing business although it does not exist anymore but although their rating does not exist anymore but these things always remain same right when india is going to initiate a, a, a ease of doing business for states they are going to look at these parameters only just the phrases will be different a word will be different a new new acronym will be there but the parameters will remain same so remember each of them opening a business getting the location accessing finance i picked it up from the website itself world, world bank dealing with the operations and uh, operating in a secure business place in fact closing a business uh con resolving insolvency closing a business is an important part of it in fact i remember right from the beginning towards the end all these uh, 12 of them we have covered each of them in details in some or the other snapshot i have explained myself point i am making is that each of them could be picked as a question in main examination starting a business what is the level of ease in a country like ours yes it is good it is very good in india because of the startup culture so starting a business is not a problem employer employing workers ha huh, this is something that can be looked at the code right the the labor code in india employing higher and fire policy 100 to 300 men uh, people it has been increased higher and fire so what is the issue of the industry what is the issue of the labor reforms required dealing with construction permits getting electricity see getting electricity and getting electricity connection and getting reliable electricity these are both different things so reliable electricity is more important registering of the property getting credit yes credit especially for msmes right small industries this is important protecting minor minority investors right paying taxation trading across borders very important because india wants to raise its export levels contract enforcement right this is the reason that we have portals like um, the one in which we have uh, yes egm e government marketplace government e marketplace right enforcing contracts and insolvency we can in india right now we can initiate a business in a very small matter of time but if you want to close down a business it take 2 plus year this is what government has promised it will bring it down to less than 6 months see so this becomes very important we must we must have 3 to 3 uh, you know good points or issues with each of these parameters we have discussed this it will keep coming on current affairs again and again we'll we'll pick it up again right so when you look at the kind of productivity our country has right total factor pro productivity is nothing but the uh, factors of production the four factors of production land labor um, capital and entrepreneurship see it vary it varies so much in a country like uh, uh, india in up and karnataka both have same gdp but the productivity level is very much different right because karnataka has uh you know there is 75% difference in population karnataka has population of around 7 8 crores and up has 20 crores plus population yet the same level of productivity how is it possible see because of productivity per person which is different right same happens to smaller companies and bigger companies smaller companies not able to access finances smaller companies not able to pay the you know bribe charges corruption and therefore they fall into traps right uh, difference in salary levels at these places right see firms there is 24 times difference in production between our largest and smaller manufacturing firms there it is 
so how are we going to encourage uh, msmes no oh, pick it up pick up this this is from orf right and they have simply stated that there is 24 time difference in the uh, productivity between largest and smaller companies so when you look at the shortcomings you know which does not lead msmes to grow in india credit could be one there could be other issues employability mechanization presence of electricity land everything this is another one compliance norms all right friendly fire right all right so this is the first snapshot covered for you people usually the first one that i take up takes a little time because because there are some themes related to it right all right are there questions hi anuj good evening Hi Resham, good evening. Kanupriya, good evening. All right. All right. So, uh, if you look at the kind of laws we have to abide with, see, uh, in a state like Gujarat also, which is doing well on ease of doing business, logistics parameters, Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, these are better off states. See, Gujarat, industrial state. Tamil Nadu, industrial state. Karnataka, industrial state. Right? In smaller industrial states, Haryana is the one. These are bigger industrial states and also Maharashtra. Karnataka, Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, Gujarat. Their logistical level will also be better. Their level of transportation will also be better. Their manufacturing capabilities are also good. Right? This is the reason I am saying. These are appreciations of these states. Having said that, having said that, these states also have to ensure that people uh, comply with these acts, compliances and criminal causes. Look. So, at an average in India, remember that 55% of laws, <laughs> they will land up in, <laughs> land us up in jails, industrial, industry related laws and 40% of these compliances will do so again. More than around 70,000 compliances and 1500 laws. Okay, this is a joke, mockery. But very old laws, no, very old laws. Okay. So, this is the update from here. We have covered this all. Do remember the three kind of punishments that are given, right? So one is reformatory, retributive and punitive. Right? Punitive could be there, fine, punish them, but, but, but not under rigorous imprisonment, no, or jails. Give them fines. There are four levels of uh, penalty in that way, right, in IPC. One is uh, simple imprisonment, chakki nai peesna, you don't have to, you know, chakki piecing. Simple imprisonment. Then we, we have rigorous imprisonment. Rigorous. You have to bear the load, earn some money, pay some to the government, pay rest of it at your home or purchase some entities in the jail campus only for yourself. The third one is pay some fines and then you are done. No problem. And the fourth one is uh, gallows. Right? You understand gallows? <laughs> Death penalty. Okay. So, Historically as well, no, none of the countries want their businessmen to be, you know, put put behind the bars because they are the ones who pay taxes to the government, isn't it? So Mahabharata to us, Astra, uh, Shastra, criminality was never a part of punitive action against businesses in ancient India. Financial penalty is constituted most of the punitive action, as simple as that. Yeah. All right. See, rent-seeking climate in the bureaucracy. Rent-seeking climate in the bureaucracy. Good phrase to pick up when you talk about corruption. Use this word, use this phrase, all right. So these are the important things mentioned here. Second snapshot, environmental impact of fly ash. Fly ash has been in the news in the last few years because of uh, multiple reasons. See, what is fly ash? It is a byproduct of uh, the burning of coal in industries. It flies, it flies, that is why fly ash, this is the one. And then we have bottom ash, right, bottom ash, is at the bottom, fly ash will fly, it is at, you know, so these are the particulate matters which definitely will affect the environment, they will affect our lung systems, health and they cause innumerable problems. On the other hand, since they are byproduct of uh, the coal industry, they can also be used for certain activities. This is what the NGT orders keep telling all the time. They keep enforcing these orders that wherever these thermal power plants exist in a radius of 300 kilometers, start ensuring that all the fly ash is used for creation of what? Creation of bricks. Creation of concrete. Participation in road projects. 
they contain silica they contain aluminium they contain some cert certain minerals which can give strength to the bricks concrete road projects all of them right pcc rcc all of them so this is in fact a good thing that it gets generated it needs to be done in in this way right this is one thing about this the second one is how to even obtain this fly ash because it is flying no we have to obtain it through electrostatic pre precipitators electrostatic precipitators this is one mode and the second one is wet scrubbers these are different modes in, in industrial processes for example when the flue gas the exhaust gas when it is re getting released here so2 other things getting released this particulate matter also comes up and it gets released and if we are able to ensure that through some electrical processes um, these particulate matter they do not come out in the air they are stored they can be utilized for another process right so circular economy gets generated in fact the cost of these bricks is quite good they are sustainable durable as well and they will also not cause environmental uh, impact and damage to human health right so additional benefits here circular economy gets created so we we try to use these kind of entities right so this is why uh, in news now what has happened lately is that there have been in many cases and in many of the cases what happened is that the places where this fly ash and the bottom ash was kept in form of uh, um, uh, you know a place where it would be kept this all would collapse right it would lead to you know again fly ash getting you know uh, dotting the whole place and that is why ngt has said that we need to tighten these norms now so raising fines, right? Raising awareness amongst people, bettering the technology. All this is the uh, norm that NGT tries to follow. Also, one more thing here, that is that uh, solid waste. These are the solid waste, solid waste management. And in the Swachh Bharat two component, solid waste management has been taken very very seriously. In fact, not only the solid waste that we are generating right now. But these piles of fly ashes that have been collected during due time, this, this is the one that has to be handled. That has been collected over time. Not only fly ash, but other kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, landfills. Landfills. So ash ponds, these, the phrase is ash ponds. These are the places where fly ash and bottom ash is kept, right? So it causes avalanche, right? In, in so many cases we have seen in places like Delhi and Mumbai, that uh, uh, these uh, landfill sites or the places which they didn't even fill land, they have created a complete artificial mountain out of it, a complete pile. This is also collapsed. So uh, this is what the government is doing in Swachh Bharat right now, that all this waste which has collected over decades and decades, this must be processed along with the processing of the present uh, uh, waste generation. This is why we need more civil servants. This is why we need more technicians, engineers who are able to handle this and do it for our country. Okay. This is why you people are required. Now, whether it is going to be a, uh, you know, model executed directly by the government or with private participation, whether you can, you know, instate a complete industry in itself. There are people who are generating crores and crores of money out of, out of private participation through this. Right? So this is why it is in news, right? So, ash what are the major problems? Ash accumulation, storage facility is not there, lack of standards, poor utilization of uh, fly ash, hazards, all right, and regulations, lack of regulations. And in case regulations do exist, you know, they will make you <laughs> get go to the jails, right? Coal ash, also called as flash, contains arsenic, lead, selenium, hexavalent, chromium, and mercury, all deadly, each of them deadly. Chromium, mercury, lead, arsenic, these are all pollutants for us. Name the disease and then that's 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 what these minerals cause. Important highlights of the NGT order, streamline the monitoring of this complete, you know, ash, uh, ash ponds, streamline, need for action plan, accountability, risk assessment, public health risk, right? See, these are the common keywords that you could use in many of the answers, all of these keywords. I have also explained another theme which was always in news, right? So this is the system of fly ash. Third, third update is on Samrid initiative. See, this is an initiative of AIM, US Aid, International, uh, US Aid for International uh, Development. And what are they trying to do is, they are trying to ensure that uh, uh, health in India becomes inclusive. 
right how does it happen so what are they trying to do is ensure that there is blended funding by government and private bodies blended funding please start using this word because this has been popularized in uh, this budget economic survey both of it blended funding is that uh, concept in which government will put in some money say 20 percent it has also stated 20 percent of maximum money in several projects and then rest will be crowded in through private investment crowded in that is the word to use so the why why government will be putting in money because this is how it lures the private stakeholders no it will lure private stakeholders see i also have a stake so in case we lose in case i am not setting good compliances in case i am not easing your business i also have, have a stake i will also lose so this is what is called as blended capital government doesn't have full capital it doesn't have the money we all know we are running deficits we have all been a part of the budget so, uh, when we see this uh, blended capital is being introduced, the idea is to help uh, the companies, uh, innovative companies in this medical sector to start delivering services to ensure that the out-of-pocket expenditure, out-of-pocket expenditure reduces. Remember, we have studied this, the proportion of out-of-pocket expenditure in India, what is that? Also, this wants to increase the expenditures by the public uh, facilities. So presently, India is spending around 3.5% of the GDP, total, total, 3.5% of GDP in health sector and government is hardly spending 1.3%. Rest of it, who? Us, we people. And during Corona pandemic times, uh, the burden is all the more on people. So, this Samrat scheme is going to do what? Sustainable access to market and resources for innovative delivery of healthcare. Innovative delivery of healthcare. I will keep repeating those words again. The four A, the three A's and quality. Accessible, affordable and uh, available. And then quality. Health can be valid. Education can be valid. Right? This was a part of the uh, national rural health mission, NRHM. Right. So I remembered it that time itself. We've been using it since then. You people also must. All right. So see, the focus areas are this oxygen supply, healthcare, vaccine, medical devices, delivery, diagnostics, uh, training of persons, education, communication, behavior, preventive diseases, all of them. They must reach out when they say the word is innovative delivery of healthcare. Delivery to whom? Not only urban. Urban has got a, got a good outreach, rural parts rural countryside okay so this is the update from here accessible access to affordable health health care target vulnerable sections so the targeting of the audience the key audience is important here that's it see so the point i'm making is teams kitne bhi hai, whether it is samrid or uh, or or any atal yojana or any uh, you know gandhi yojana or uh, even if it is uh, uh, other programs, for example, Jan Aroke Yojana or uh, uh, the primary health centers, right? The health centers, all of them, uh, each of them cater to the same needs. So once you have the foundations with you, that is some data, some keywords on that sector, health sector, these all, you know, every new keyword will get a part, become a part of your data bank and you will thrust in the same information again and again, no problem. The examiner is not reading all your answers. They are only reading 20 of your answers in that paper. They don't know how much you know. Right? And neither that examiner gets repeated in the next exam. So, use the same information. This is the key to success. This is what toppers do all the time. Alright? See, the rest of it is same thing. Need for holistic approach, capital flow, enhanced affordability and quality services. What did I say? Quality, available, accessible, affordable, affordable and quality. See, <laughs> good. If you're catching up, it's great to know. All right. Okay. Let me see. A uh, lot of things written here. Somic says, this was the reason for coming with new labor codes under one umbrella. Yes. Yes. See, we have, so Somic is talking about the first uh, snapshot about reducing the compliances burden on people. We have introduced four labor codes and these four labor codes have been introduced uh, by decreasing around 40 to 50 laws. The government itself has stated that in the last few years, 
it has reduced down thousands of compliances and laws thousands that is true absolutely true but is it sufficient it might not be sufficient because government wants on one hand to increase businesses on the other hand uh, the laws still exist through which people are getting exploited so uh, eliminate them make them easier for people that's the point so uh, the idea is also there's on, uh, another proposal that all these four <laughs> codes put them into one again <laughs> right why why have four four different codes so let's see all right legacy ash yes legacy good word to use all of you legacy can be attached to all other words also legacy pollution legacy of uh, waste management all of it right so presently the civil servants don't only have to bear the burden of the present incoming uh, uh, issues and disruptive with technology but also bear the load of the legacy that uh, you know that we have carried all the time Okay, Ravi says healing Himalayas, self-help group clean, uh, cleaning waste in Himalayas in a round country. Okay, good. Good that you are using these. I have seen Ravi speaking of examples every time. So these examples become his cases also. The difference between example and cases is that when you say healing uh, Himalayas is doing this, that is an example. But when you say in your complete answer, we, we, we have an answer writing teaching also. Uh, in our uh, in our paid courses so what what we share that uh, there is that if there is a question write the question and when you mention the answer have a part in the first page itself where you talk of a case related to that answer in this case what you do is that uh, what you do is exactly this right healing himalayas case of healing himalayas and then you talk about uh, the major objective of this healing himalaya how they have impacted and uh, where it is located that's it so these are three points related to that particular theme this becomes a case on the other hand example is just you know writing the point and below that an example of healing himalaya is doing the same so this is the difference between an example and a case why a case becomes important is because case you know the examiner feels oh my god this person knows of a complete theme they know about it too well look at the impression that it carries i will show my answers and you will be you 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 know it will automatically capture the attention of the examiner that's what is required now when they are correcting when they are correcting thousands of copies there are 8 to 10000 or maybe 12000 students appearing in the main examination so many copies have to be corrected what makes you stand out these cases might the presentation might right so right now we are typing the answers slowly steadily you will get into the habit of writing the answers all right okay today is Okay, next comment, sir. Why will the private invest in Sambhal scheme? What is their benefit? They also will participate. No, they 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 might be the people who are introducing that particular industry, right? So they will also will uh, rope in some money. All the money will not see earlier till now. We have been paying all the money. No, if we want to start a business, we pay all the money. But government says no. You don't pay all the money. We also will put in some money. So you pay eighty. We pay 20. You don't have money, it's fine. You want us to also take the risk, fine. We will also participate. So, uh, this is how they are crowding in money and finances. And not only that, uh, uh, the person who is uh, installing the business pays 80. No, lot of funds. See, US aid has come in. No, lot of charity funds also come in. And th they are the ones which are going to fund innovative projects, innovations in delivery of health systems innovations and delivery and these people are incubators they have ideas shark tank i also don't watch it but point is that if we have an innovative idea there will be people to fund me this is what the government is doing in health sector right now innovations and they will be funded the government says we will also take the risk while you fund it so out of pocket expenditure almost 50 percent all right thank you this day in history dedicated to World Yunani Day because one important person, Hakim Ajmal Khan, was born on this day. I have start. I've tried to look up all this. So Ayush, Ayurved in India, homeopathy Western, more so German uh, in the modern times. Uh, then we have uh, Yog India, Yunani, Yunani from where? Which country? Yunan province Yunnan Greeks right and then they you know they learned from the when they came to India Alexander and other people came to India interactions cross-cultural learnings Indians also learned this and carried this ancient art and Siddha Siddha where is it from ancient art of medicines right so this day industry dedicated to world Yunani day and again Soa Rigpa I really want to study a little about this 
and share with uh, you people this system of medication. This is very much allied with our systems as well. And so is Yunani. So I was reading about Yunani and uh, its components do include Kapha. Kapha, that is the phlegm that is formed. Bulgar nahi bolte hindi mein, phlegm. That is one of the uh, Kapha. This is one of the parts. And then bile, the white and black bile, which is in English, but in Hindi it is called as pith, pith, bile, bile juice, right, in, inside the body. So bile, and, and these are the important uh, ingredients of uh, healing in Yunani. And these are very much similar in our uh, Ayurvedic systems as well. Yeah. All right. So this is how we dedicate this day in history to Ajmal Khan. He was uh, the one who founded uh, Delhi, Delhi's Jamia Milia Islamia, right, was first chancellor of this university as well, dedicated this day towards him. All right. Feature news for today is on Namami Gange mission. Pura ka pura. We will cover this in totality, covering many, many aspects and beautiful aspects of uh, this news, right. I will simplify it for all of you. Namami Gange, what has been the national mission for clean Ganga? What is uh, the various institutions under which or with which this Namami Gange mission is getting operated? What has been the precedence set? What, has, what is still happening because of which we are not able to cure our rivers? What is the issue? Nirmal flow, Aviral flow, Jan Ganga, Gan, Gyan Ganga, all of them, right? Through illustrations, we'll cover this beautiful uh, article. Feature news for today. Thawing of uh, Arctic permafrost. This is how you see the Arctic permafrost is thawing. Thawing is the slow and steady melting. Permafrost are those segments of frost which are almost permanently frosted, right? They are covered under the snow all the time, but slowly and steadily it is getting uh, converted into water. So, you see, if you see in this image, it is all breaking apart right here, thawing. And thawing leads to methane release, release of diseases from the past. Increase in sea level, right? What about the home for uh, the polar bears, right? What about the uh, other animals and mammals living here? Uh, grave problem for them all, right? On the other hand, what is the advantage of this? Uh, these are the issues, no? The advantages of this is that it leads to all the year round availability of trade routes. Exploration of minerals, strategic edge for the country for which it is uh, uh, benefiting, right? Yeah, I agree that these points, some of them, they do not overpower, they do not overpower this point. But then this is definitely a point. So do not skip on your ideas, frame them in uh, beautiful and uh, you know important words. Those words which uh, speak less but say more. And then, you know, where you go. So, Coastal Vulnerability Index, very much linked to permafrost and thawing of it, right? Coastal Vulnerability Index, it has been uh, released by uh, INCOIS, one important organization, autonomous organization associated with Ministry of, uh, Ministry of Earth Sciences. And what it has done is that it has produced more than 150 maps, vulnerability maps uh, of India, especially the coastal areas. Within the... Uh, 100 uh, kilometers within 100 kilometers of the coastal areas uh, lie or live are 25 percent of india's population imagine this and that is why we need a complete hazard mapping of this uh, coastal areas specifically because of the sea level rise sea level rise the other factors being increased number of cyclones happening here right tsunami etc and then we also have droughts in those areas availability of water mapping all of them have been mapped 150 plus maps by uh, the uh, by uh, uh, inquiries all right so this is what is the update linked with the image of the day right so so how does it help you how does it help you is through giving solutions when we talk about the disasters happening in coastal areas you will say that these kind of mappings hazard mapping the multi hazard vulnerability mapping this is going to assist uh, our country. See, mangrove cover also helps, right? Bulwark for the, uh, bulwark means, you know, a wall. Bulwark for the cyclones. Major ports are located in these areas. There are so many fishing villages in India. And uh, 
almost one fourth of the population living uh, under 100 kilometers. So that is why it is necessary. The second update is on nuclear fusion carried out in uh, UK and this time they achieved a milestone. Milestone was just this that these reactions which are which need intensive energy also these reactions were carried out and uh, they yielded maximum energy in this particular reaction as of now. So this is a nuclear fusion that we are talking of. All of you know the reactor's name, right? So reactor used here is uh, called as tokamak and China also is trying to uh, simulate what is happening in these kind of reactors in this tokamak machine. We have uh, some isotopes of hydrogen, deuterium, tritium. They rotate at very high speed and then they start reacting so that they yield uh, yield heat. Heat, it is intensive also. Heat is to be provided as well and it releases also heat. Imagine that, right? So, fusion reactions. All right. Mm, that's it. High pollution in Mumbai happening. Why? Because of, uh, so, caused high, you know, high levels of air quality index. And when we see 301, 400, let me ask you, <laughs> uh, if you see the level of 300 AQI, what is it? Is it the level of particulate matter or nitrogen dioxide or uh, uh, particulate matter 2.5, particulate matter uh, 10? What is it? I will not answer this today because this will exceed the, uh, you know, exceed very well the range of this scope of this conversation. But just food for thought, what is it? The uh, you know, 300, 400, what is it? Let me know this. On the other hand, what happens in Mumbai is that, you know, some sometimes hit by dust storms or, uh, or uh, you know, storms of other kind. So, this has resulted in air, very poor uh, air quality here in Mumbai, Rajasthan. Uh, right? So, Rajasthan, Afghanistan, Pakistan, all these places bordering. Right? So, borders don't know. Uh, these storms don't know the borders. Similarly, the insects which carry on from uh, the Middle East area and even before the African area, when they move to Indian subcontinent to harm the vegetables and crops, they do not know the borders. So they all harm Pakistan and India cultivations, all of them, right? And uh, dust is another one, dust storms. All right. White-cheeked Macau. White cheek Macau has been recently found in Arunachal Pradesh, right? And this is a mammal rarely found, rarely found in China also. It has been found uh, rarely in India now, right? So uh, this is this species has not at all been mapped in our country, and this is the reason that uh, we don't have the <laughs> we have not included this in Wildlife Protection Act. So makes it easier for you as of now, but in a few days if they. If they call it endangered, you will have to remember that also. This was a news in Hindu. White cheek macaw. It is a mammal, a type of macaw and type of monkey. And uh, white cheeks, it has got white cheeks, some extra fur, long neck. These are some of the features. It was in news. So, Arunachal Pradesh, right? Remember these facts about it. That's it. Editorials for today. Let me look at some questions. If you have Greece. Thank you. Yes, Greece, Yunani. Nitish says Tibbit. Tough Pitvat. Yes, Ashutosh. The sources of uh, the disease and balance in human body. Bile in gallbladder. Yes. Parma frost in Tundra region. Okay, good. And give rise to peatlands also. Okay. Eternal movie. Positive feedback. Positive feedback in relation to what? Locust swarm. Yeah, that's the one. Locust swarm. Good. Asif Khan, what do you want to say? Please say. Editorials for today. Uh, re really impressed with the uh, Q as well. Great. The kind of uh, you know comments that you keep providing, very very encouraging, and it's it's good. Keep sharing because uh, slowly steadily we all will get into the ecosystem of learning, sharing, and as you nikal jayega exam. It'll be you'll be through like this. All right. So uh, balancing act between Russia and USA amidst growing tensions. ORF. All right. So another one. See. There was a time in August when the same crisis, similar crisis was erupting in Afghanistan. And we discussed this issue at multiple levels. What is India doing? What is Pakistan's take? What is Afghanistan about? The complete history we studied. We've studied this about Tibet as well, right? Uh, repeatedly about the issue. Now it is coming up in Russia. We must understand the multiple perspectives because this will help in at least four or five questions of international relation. 
it will also help us in, in inter internal security paper 3 so this is why we discuss various uh, dimensions of the same issue because it also gives us some insight into the history present geopolitics what are the compulsions of the various nations and how diplomacy happens this will not only help you in main understanding pre exam also and interview more so right okay so uh, what is happening here is that uh, uh, how is india behaving so first thing is that india is an important stakeholder for russia because india has good uh, due, you know imports from russia 60% of defense still getting imported from russia usa because our human resources are involved in a country like that we have good trade with uh, with usa we have investments in usa so does usa have you know bilateral investments and we also have military engagements strategic engagements uh, with usa logistics agreement right movement of persons engagement many of them uh, with usa so both countries are important for us usa little more important because strategically we see growth towards usa right russia is not by far doing as much in economy plus india's bilateral trade with russia only 10 billion dollars with usa almost 100 billion dollars so this is more profitable even when we look at our imports or exports okay so what has india done india has the article talks about india uh, bypassing the procedural vote of discussing the ukraine issue you so far usa has said we are not disturbed about india you know we we don't have any issue with india usa has clearly stated this but if you see russia's stand not here but previously when india participates in quad when india participates in usa's east east asia or indo pacific region strategy india participates in usa's strategy russia has a problem with that russia doesn't feel very comfortable on the other hand russia has also grows closer to china also grows closer to pakistan so india must look at russia not only as strategic partner but it must also diversify it because russia is also engaging with competing economies no competing economies and warring nations two and a half front war one front two front third is the half front inside india so when we speak of defense policy when we are procuring so much it is just because of these countries that we are procuring so much so thus, thus india must also look at other ways of diversifying that's what india is doing right so it says petorio also talks about what russia stand what is us stand right now so russia says we will go ahead with in case the war happens we will go ahead with such military and technical consequences what god knows what technical and military it means and then us says that we will impose unprecedented sanctions they have already imposed hundreds of sanctions unprecedented sanctions they'll impose this is what us have said so war of words right now who is benefiting china is benefiting so we will cover russia china and relations also all sometime what is the reason that s400 delivery was stopped to <laughs> china why so has china encroached upon russia also or is it only with mongolia india vietnam and you know these smaller countries so yes china encroached upon russia also post independence so yes russia and china are competing on means but right now they are you know hand in gloves they are brothers right now okay all right so this is what the conclusion is india might for its own interest get into any tactical or strategic uh, relationships just like india has right now and it is independent to act externally this is what it says all right what's next next is uh, finding a safer approach to public finance this editorial uh, simply speaks that raising taxation right now will not be a good move also if people are expecting taxation to go down right now that will also not happen because government has to cover uh, at least a base level of taxation but when the time is right government might also increase taxation uh, especially from the rich individuals right because this is how public finance work they tax and they start giving services to others why the tax has not been dropped is because government needs to cover the regular expenditures on the other hand when taxes have been kept at the same rate this also means that uh, government knows that a very decent chunk of population is vulnerable far vulnerable yes we have very few taxpayers no five on, only around 5 crore taxpayers in the country only 5 crore and um, so uh, the impact on the people because of k shaped recovery the impact on k shaped right so the impact on the lower half has been very very high and that is the reason they have not raised tax right now all right quite a bit of budget losing jobs this is a theme 
I would uh, we have covered this previously about Haryana and other state level laws. We are thinking of covering this also in a future news about specific states, Haryana, and we have examples of other states also. What they have done is that they have imposed local laws through which uh, employment will be given to only local persons. Seventy five percent of employment in certain categories will be reserved for only people who are residents of Haryana. Residents. They shouldn't be a migrant. Doesn't mean that if I have come from Chennai or if I have come from Assam or Mumbai, I cannot work in Haryana. It means that I got to be staying there for a minimum earlier. The you know age was like 10 years of stay and then later it was reduced to 5. But then compliances, increased compliances. Why should not I be able to trade throughout the country wherever and whenever I want? This is against the fundamental laws right fundamental rights of individuals so haryana has said that 75 percent of employment to be reserved in specific sectors of job right for only people who are residents of haryana locals of haryana right and what has happened because of this is many companies are not happy many it firms many manufacturing firms they're not happy because of employability issues right now if if people in haryana do not have possess that level of not everybody, not everybody, but if I generalize, the competition decreases, no? The competition of labor employment in Haryana decreases if you only give it to people who are residents of Haryana. This is creating an issue for the uh, companies. And that is the reason that many of them have already started to ship out. Imagine the implications of this. A growing state, right? Among small states, Haryana is one of the most developed. All right? Okay. So this is... Uh, this is what this editorial speaks of. All right. If you like this initiative, share some love through likes, comments and shares. It must not stop because through your likes, comments, shares, this is how we grow as a family and uh, uh, multiple ways, right? All right. Let's look at what you people are mentioning. Somik says, what should be our stand if we choose any of USA and Russia? No, no, no. We, we can't take a stand here. We have to say, this is what is diplomacy. This is what is strategy for India. We can't take a stand that we want to become friends with you or you or you. No. Uh, the point here is that India must be, the, the bottom line of this is this, that India must be independent externally to be able to choose uh, that partner which is uh, necessary for India's growth. So, when you look at Palestine, India helps, India participates in the cause of Palestine also. But India has a greater uh, scientific de defense engagement with Israel as well. Both of these nations, or if I might, may or may not call Palestine as a nation, accepted uh, you know, by United Nations and other people as, uh, as observer. So India has relations with both of them. Yeah? India has also got good relations with Saudi Arabia. On the other hand, Saudi Arabia is a good friend of Pakistan and uh, supplies jet and finances to Pakistan, runs so, so many schemes in Pakistan, but India is friends with Saudi Arabia. Imagine this, India is also friends with Iran. Iran, Israel, Saudi Arabia. How is this possible? And Palestine as well. Look at this. India is also doing one of the maximum trades with a country, China. On the other hand, India has got a good presence with USA also. Point I am making all through all this is that India must have its strategic autonomy with itself. Even if it is to the level of uh, calling it strategic ambiguity, that's fine. But use these words. Strategic autonomy, independent externally, strategic, uh, what was the other word that I used? Strategic um, ambiguity, autonomy and ambiguity. No matter what, we will do this because it is good for our country. So we will not take a stand here, right? Although yes. Right now, India's stand looks to be inclined towards Russia, but India has also given a caution that it must be settled peacefully. That means favoring European nations and um, largely USA, you know, the economy is going towards this direction. But they don't help us providing technology, you know. So that is why we are still tilted towards Russia. All right. Ravi says, ministerial level meeting of uh, Quad in Australia. AQI is composed of eight pollutants. Yes, yes, that is fine. But a, yes, Hima, AQI is composed of eight of them. Yes, but if I say if the air quality index in uh, uh, Mumbai is 300, if I say this, what is it? Is it the pollution level of NO2 or is it SO2 or particulate matter 2.5 or 100? What is this number? I am asking that. Uh, Rajeshwari says, please explain the case of re recovery. Sure, sure. See, K-shaped recovery was spoken of by the previous economic survey that India has 
uh, not K, but uh, V-shaped recovery. And that is why it was in question also. Main examination question was asked. See, whenever we had uh, the slump in economy after, let me explain this through, uh, to you through this. Uh, Nifty. All right. So this is how we use technology. See? Question and answer right here. Nifty 50 index. This is one of the indices in stock market reflective of the growth of market capitalization of 50, 50 favored companies. See? So when you look at the level of slump here, can you see this slump? Rajeshwari, can you see this uh, slump here? If I could only expand this. If you see, this is a V shape right here. And this is the Corona Times. V. If you can see this, this is the V that I am speaking of right here. Five years. Have a look at this V. This was the V that got formed when India took a major slump in economy because of uh, the COVID and then it grew back again. But and this was also a part of the UPSC question that India is going through a V-shaped recovery. Do you agree or not? This was previous economic survey, but question was asked this time, this just last month. And the answer to this is that it is not a V-shaped recovery. It is a K-shaped recovery. Some of the sectors have gone upper. Some of the sectors have gone niche. This looks almost, almost like a K. So this is not a V-shaped recovery because, uh, because while on one hand, IT sector, again a boom, Pharma sectors doing well, right? Logistics doing well, FMCG, fast moving consumer goods doing well. So some sectors, external trade doing well, right? Then we have electronic sectors, okay. But what about the other sectors? There are tourism sector, there's tourism sector. There is MSME, there is conventional shopping, conventional shopping, real estate. Right. What about recreation? Who is able to go to Apughar? Right. What about uh, uh, to transport? People from work from home economy. What about the people who are in transport? Look at this. So this sector, aviation. There is no dearth of sectors which have gotten impacted and are still getting impacted. And the latest from WHO is that this variant Omicron is the not is not the last variant. It is the latest but not the last variant. So while on one hand you see increase in uh, the growth in in some sectors moving upwards, there is another set of um, sectors which have gone further down. This is K-shaped recovery. Some sectors have gone up, some have gone down. All right. This is how you should be able to explain if asked in examination. Give examples of all this. Okay. Okay. Peace level. Kindly share some important aspects of Palestine for India. Yes. It will let it come up. Let it come up. We will share again. Let there be bombardments or let there be peace talk. We will share it. Sure. Peace level. Ashutosh says, act like Narad Muni in Indian mythology. <laughs> no, Narad Muni also would, uh, you know, either ka udar, no? Not like that. Strategic autonomy. Amlan says, yes, Ravi, India for the first time condemned North Korea on missile launch. In most cases, abstain. Uh, what do we gain from Palestine? Palestine, we don't get anything from Palestine per se, but Palestine is the cause for all the Arab nations. Palestine is at the center of cause for most of the Arab nations. Because, uh, you know, in, in Israel or erstwhile Palestine, lies the most important religious places place for uh, worshipping that is for three religions so jews islam and uh, uh, aqsa mosque in 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 palace in in uh, jerusalem so jews islam and christianity right so there are defenders of palestine in the arab world and india needs to have friendship with many of them because we import oil we import energy, we have diplomacy, many of them are also going to purchase our, uh, our, our weaponries, right? Specifically the Brahmos, right? Uh, that is it. Bhavani, Hima, none of you are correct. It is not 2.5. It totally depends. I will explain that some other day. Welcome Rajeshwari, keep asking, keep getting indulged. Ravi says, Apu Ghar project in Gurugram, biggest fraud. Okay. All right. So you like this initiative? Share some love. 
what is new school new school is a new project which has been initiated this is an online school this is not bound to the limitations of the project or uh, you know the assignment work this is for all the kids they can talk interact they can go beyond the regular curriculum this is a new school one of its kind right broader experience of schooling online right new school formed in india a beautiful initiative a case study of how children can enjoy uh, even participating in online activities right so we are not going as much as or as far as uh, augmented reality but yes online things can result in uh, greater engagement of students right we are doing that right now but then uh, this must not lead to exceeding time uh, what is that called uh, screen time a key word here the screen time is an important factor for uh, children engagement uh, online this should not exceed a particular limit this should also uh, ensure that a threshold is provided to children so that they are able to interact during times of distress as well all right so new schools has over 100 coaches and more than 1 lakh students they can uh, come from any part of the cities metro cities or other part of the cities and they learn with each other right quote of the day the task of modern educator is not to cut down jungles but to irrigate deserts wow that's true irrigate minds not to empty them right not to divide people but to integrate all right so this is how we come to the conclusion of uh, the current affairs segment we will quickly move to the segment in which we talk about the uh, rivers in india and how we are trying to clean them a beautiful presentation worked on it well so let's uh, get going with that all right thank you for participation see you in the video the other video and yes it is a friday so we will uh, next meet on monday evening but saturday is for utilizing uh, whatever is left out and revising all of them i keep revising through conversations with you you have to keep revising by yourself and with conversations as well right so once it is there in your notes revision is not a problem but then it must be there we are seeing each other getting built up through this so don't lag behind participate in the conversations if you are here and uh, also revise right no no it is neither it is not even carbon monoxide i'll share that hi vakram good evening a little late today never mind see you in the other video vakram you can watch this later all right welcome kanupriya puja all of you i will see you in the other video